We all know Blender as a 3D modeling and animation software, but did you know that it had at some point also a game engine? You have probably came across this animation masterpiece called Sintel, released around 12 years ago. It is one of the open movies released by the Blender Foundation, showcasing the power and capabilities of the software through an amazing fantasy storytelling. For many, this movie represents an important source of inspiration, thus pushed them to pursue their dreams of becoming a 3D artist. But did you know that there was an actual game adaptation for it? There was an open source game development project called Sintel the Game, which was entirely based on the Blender internal game engine. I mean, just look at the Blender Institute recreations as everything was made inside of Blender from modeling, texturing, animation, game mechanics, and all the different effects of the game. And this was not the first Blender game engine project, because there was also a Blender open project called Yo Frankie, an adventure game released in 2008, which all we can agree back then looked pretty damn good, and which also played a major role in inspiring and bringing more interest in the development of the Blender game engine. As you may know, since 2002, Blender became open source and its development is now dependent on the public's contribution. For several years, Blender was the first and the only free and open source 3D software that allows the creation of a fully fledged video game within a single package. This is the case because it offered multiple ways of developing your game including scripting, logic breaks and logic nodes, also allowing easy export of your game files within few clicks. But with the introduction of Blender 2.8, sadly the game engine was removed, a sort of legacy and one of a kind game engine, but it was killed and forgotten. Or was it? Before we continue, if you are interested in learning more about how to learn 3D modeling and animation, I recommend you take a look at Skillshare. You may know Skillshare for photography, video editing, and illustration classes, but it actually has many animation, game development, and VFX focused stuff. For example, Next Dot on Skillshare offer tens of classes about Blender, ZBrush, Maya, and so on and they are especially made for beginners. And all of this is just from one creator. So imagine what's out there on Skillshare. The amazing thing is that, for example, Nextdot are selling their courses for $10 to $15 each, and you can access all of them with the price of less than one course every month, let alone all the other classes available to you from other creators every month. So, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So, in this video, we'll try to go over the reasons why we no longer have a game engine inside Blender and was it really a good decision after a few years have already passed. As stated in the release notes, developers recommended switching to more powerful open source alternatives to the Blender game engine such as Godot or Armory 3D, as the Blender game engine was not facing a tough competition from open source game engines only, but also from major players in the industry which are not necessarily fully free. And of course, I'm talking about game engines like Unreal and Unity, for example, while these two engines are based on static and compiled languages like C++ and C# -sharp respectively, Blender game engine relied on Python. Although it is simply to write code using it, it is a dynamically typed and interpreted language, so it is generally slower and less efficient, especially when it comes to computationally heavy applications such as video games. So the Blender game engine was like a feature in a very ambitious software. Its game development competitors have entire companies behind them aiming to develop and improve their game engines every single day. So it is kind of obvious that the Blender game engine could not keep up with the pace and was inevitably going to have to make important decisions in order to keep the software in alignment with the vision of its contributors and what the community is truly expecting from the software. This is Blender's never-ending problem in its direction to become a fully industry standard software, which is aiming to be a Swiss knife of digital content creation, splitting its resources across multiple disciplines, making it very hard to perform best in all those areas. Also, the 2.8 version was one of the, if not the most important update in Blender's history. 
Everyone was hyped about it as it brought so much improvements to the software such as a UI rework, 2D animation with Grease Pencil, and the introduction of real-time rendering with Eevee, which replaced the Blender internal renderer, the one that the Blender game engine was relying on. Eevee came with many advanced features that were missing from Blender, and artists could finally create amazing looking artworks that can include volumetrics, reflections, accurate shadows, depth of field, and so much more. And this was real-time preview in the viewport and relatively quick production of the final renders. It also seemed like the perfect render engine for games. But the Blender game engine was not the main focus of the developers and contributors, so it found itself left behind in favor of adding features, I mean more features for creating 3D content. This, in addition to the low popularity of the Blender game engine, it resulted in fewer resources being allocated to its compatibility with the new real-time render engine. But other than the existence of strong competitors, why wasn't it so popular? Many may agree that the GPL, General Public License or GNU, that the Blender is licensed under, which is a strict open source license, stating that the software is owned by contributors, making it free and open source forever and for any purpose whatsoever. And so is the game engine as a consequence, which means the game files and game executables generated by the Blender game engine contain code that is also under the GPL license, forcing the game developers or the owner of the game to license their game under the GPL and share its source code with the public. This restriction posed a significant barrier for game developers who wanted to create proprietary games or maintain control over their source code. The requirement to release the entire source code for the game discouraged many potential users for adopting the Blender game engine and made them seek alternative engines that have permissive license options such as Godel for example. Anyways, the discontinuation of the Blender game engine surely has nothing to do with the donation from Epic Games, which was a donation of over 1.2 million in cash. Now, was it a good idea to completely remove the game engine from Blender? It actually felt like Blender was taking too much for a while, containing tools for modeling, texturing, animation, sculpting, compositing, motion tracking, video editing, and so much more in addition to the game engine. As tempting as it might seem, carrying around legacy code that nobody is maintaining anymore is not possible for open source projects like Blender, because future changes especially major ones, would become more difficult to implement as these might break or conflict with those parts which no one want to fix. While some users and developers may have been disappointed by the removal of the game engine, overall it can be seen as a positive move that aligns with the project's long-term vision and goals and sustainability. By concentrating resources on the areas where Blender excels, which is a good thing to do, the developers can continue to enhance the software and satisfy the needs of the larger user base, ensuring the continuation of growth and success of Blender as a 3D software that can do wonders for free. Now, if you're also hyped with this concept of an integrated game engine in Blender, well, don't be sad because the Blender game engine is still alive and you can find it in different forms, but not inside Blender. There are also multiple projects that look like the BGE and improved upon it. But the most loyal one is the UPBGE, which stands for Ukronia Project Blender Game Engine. They basically took Blender as it is today and added its compatibility with the game engine. It means that you can model, unwrap, create shaders, use geometry nodes, build your game logic and preview your game in real time and you can do this in the 3D viewport using Eevee, are being included in each UPBGE release, making it easy to learn game development if you are already familiar with Blender. There is also Armory Game Engine, which is more of a Blender add-on and its biggest strength represents the ability to export your games to almost any device imaginable. But it suffers from long compiling times and the lack of support for new Blender functionalities such as geometry nodes. There are also some incredible games that were made using the BGE, whether they used UPBGE or Armory. We have covered actually some of them in a dedicated video if you want to take a look at it. But more recent game development projects that look very promising include Purpose Versus and Sword of Symphony, 
the developer is actually sharing the game development process in their YouTube channels. So if you are interested, you can take a look at that. Also, Default Cube is currently sharing a series of tutorials around learning the basics of UPBGE, bringing some attention to the engine and making it more accessible for beginners. Alright guys, I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also take a look at some of our previous videos. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.